Hello, this is Tony Heller from RealClimateScience.com, setting the record straight about climate. In order to convince Americans to buy off on the global warming agenda, they have to be made completely unaware of America's hot past. When I was young, everybody knew about how hot and dry the 1930s were, but that information has been lost among the current generation. George Orwell said, Who controls the past controls the future. Who controls the present controls the past. In the first part of this presentation, I'm going to show a lot of graphs. And in the second part of the presentation, I'm going to show you the American history which is being erased. This graph made with data taken from NOAA shows that the share of U.S. land with unusually high summer temperatures has been increasing and has been at record levels recently. I saw this graph on the Our World in Data website and immediately recognized it as being fraudulent. This page from the National Climate Assessment shows very clearly that peak temperatures around most of the United States have dropped sharply over the last 60 years, which is in direct contradiction to the NOAA graph. This graph shows peak temperatures increasing over a larger percentage of the United States. This next graph shows the actual measured temperatures taken from the United States Historical Climatology Network. It shows the percent of U.S. stations reaching 95 degrees Fahrenheit, or 35C, sometime during the summer. As you can see, the area of the United States getting extremely hot has dropped sharply. In 1931, 93% of the country reached 95 degrees sometime during the summer. But in recent years, it's been closer to 60%. That's a very large drop. Now let's look at the same graph for 90 degrees instead of 95 degrees. Once again, we see the same thing. There has been a significant drop in the area of the United States which gets up to 90 degrees every summer. And this graph shows the percent of days above 95 degrees for all United States Historical Climatology Network stations. In 1936, an incredible 10% of all days throughout the year were above 95 degrees. But in recent years, it's been less than half of that. So we've seen a drop in the intensity, aerial coverage, and frequency of heat waves in the United States. This NOAA graph is completely fraudulent. Now I'm going to show you how it was most likely created. This graph shows the average maximum temperature per year for every year in the United States going back to 1895. I generated it from NOAA's United States Historical Climatology Network raw monthly data set. Raw meaning the actual measured data. Now I'm going to show the adjusted data set, which looks completely different. Adjusted, raw, adjusted, raw, adjusted, raw. The raw data set shows a sharp cooling trend since the 1930s, but the adjusted data set has a sharp warming trend. This warming trend is completely fake and it's due entirely to data tampering. Let's take a closer look at that. This graph shows the difference between the adjusted and the raw temperature data sets. It shows us exactly how much the data is being tampered with by NOAA. Past temperatures are being cooled by about one and a half degrees, and present temperatures are being warmed about one degree. Don't pay too much attention to 2019 because the year isn't complete yet. This graph is a real hockey stick. It's a hockey stick of about two and a half degrees of data tampering. Now I'm going to talk about how this data tampering is being done. A small portion of it is due to the time of observation bias adjustment, which I don't want to get into here, but I've demonstrated in the past that it is wildly exaggerated. I'll do another video about the time of observation bias adjustment shortly. But what I'm going to focus on in this video is showing you that most of this adjustment is due simply to making data up. Every month in their database, NOAA marks a certain percentage of the monthly temperature records as being estimated. Estimated means that the number came from a computer model rather than a thermometer. This graph shows the percent of estimated, or what I call, fabricated data. Around the year 1900, more than half of the data was fabricated. That number dropped sharply till about 1940, and then it was fairly stable for a long time. But since about 1990, there's been a sharp increase in the amount of fabricated data. And once again, we're back up to about 50% fabricated data. Half of the U.S. data is currently being made up. My next two graphs are going to break down the adjusted data into two different parts. 
One is the adjusted data based on actual thermometer data, and the other is the adjusted data based on fabricated data. This is the adjusted data based on actual thermometer data, and it shows that current temperatures are about the same as in the 1930s. I don't agree with this data, but it doesn't show these sharp warming trends since the 1930s, which their full data set shows. Next, let's look at the warming trend for the fabricated data. The scale of this graph is compressed quite a bit from the previous graph, but it shows about 4 degrees warming since the 1930s, and this is all based on fake data. Once again, don't pay too much attention to 2019 because the year isn't complete yet. This will probably stabilize some before the year ends. But the thing to focus on is this 4 degrees warming from the 1930s to the present in the fake data. Remember that the fake data makes up about half of the current NOAA temperature data set, and it shows a fake 4 degrees warming. And then here is the temperature graph which gets presented to the public. This graph is a little bit different because it shows average temperatures rather than maximum temperatures which I was showing you previously, but the shape is generally the same idea. Nighttime temperatures have warmed in the U.S. over the last 30 years, but most of this hockey stick is again due to data tampering. It shows about 2 degrees warming since the 1930s, which is due primarily to the fake 4 degrees warming in the fabricated data. This graph is completely fraudulent and has no basis in science or reality. When you can rewrite the score of the game after the game's over, you're going to win every single time. But that's not how civil people and real scientists operate. This graph is very telling. Along the y-axis is the adjustment being made to the temperature data and along the x-axis is atmospheric carbon dioxide. You can see that the data is being tampered with precisely to match the amount of carbon dioxide in the atmosphere. In other words, the data is being adjusted to match the theory, the ultimate in junk science. Judith Curry presented my findings to Noah a few years ago, and Noah responded with, Our algorithm is working exactly as designed. So apparently this fraud isn't accidental. NASA takes their data primarily from NOAA. Next, let's look at how the data tampering has affected NASA's data sets. This is the NASA U.S. temperature graph from 1999. This year is 1934, and this year is 1998. Now let's look at their current graph with the same years highlighted. Now, 1998 is warmer than 1934, and there's a warming trend. But in the 1999 version, 1934 was the hottest year and there was a strong cooling trend. 1999 version, 2019 version, 1999 version cooling, 2019 version warming. You can see how the data tampering has turned cooling into warming. 1934 was the hottest year on record in the United States. Now I'm going to show you what it is exactly that they're hiding. This was the U.S. Weather Bureau temperature anomaly map from May 1934. The United States was blistering hot. The central portion of the country was 12 degrees above normal. That's absolutely astonishing. Now we're going to look at June, July, and August. Here is June. Once again, incredibly hot. 8 degrees above normal. July was the hottest month of all. August was almost as hot, too. During 1934, the Midwest recorded 100 degree temperatures from May 7th through August 31st. There were 2,843 readings over 100 degrees Fahrenheit in the Midwest during that period. Peak temperatures were 116 degrees in the Midwest. There were two heat waves over 100 degrees during May. During June, it went up to almost 110 degrees several heat waves in July, which got up to 116 degrees, another one in early August, and it was still over 100 degrees at the end of August. Now let's compare the 2,843 temperature readings over 100 degrees Fahrenheit in the Midwest during the summer of 1934 to this summer. This year there was one temperature reading over 100 degrees Fahrenheit, and it was probably bogus. In 1934, it got up to 116 degrees. This year, it probably didn't even get up to 100 degrees. Now compare this to the NOAA graph, which shows heat waves worse now than they were in the 1930s. It's just complete nonsense. It has no basis in reality. 
The area of the U.S. getting extremely hot has plummeted since the 1930s to record lows. 2014 was the lowest on record. Let's look now at what NOAA and NASA are trying to make disappear from 1934. July 24, 1934 was the hottest day on record in Chicago, 109 degrees at the airport. On July 26, 1934, there were people dying all over the Midwest, and it was 100 degrees in Alaska. Imagine the mass hysteria if it reached 100 degrees in Alaska now. This map shows temperatures around the United States on July 26, 1934. The purple dots represent 100 degrees, red dots represent 90 degrees. There were 100 degree temperatures from coast to coast. This never happens anymore. Look at these temperatures from the last week of May and the first week of June in 1934. Over 100 degrees every single day in the Midwest. Over 110 degrees on May 30th. This is incomprehensible now. 80% of the U.S. was in drought during the summer of 1934. The world was heating up. Ice was dissolving at the poles. Sea level was going to rise 40 feet. This page is from the Los Angeles Times on December 30th, 1934. Hand of nature falls heavily on whole world in freak weather year of 1934. Cold heat, drought, and flood set new marks. How science accounts for berserk elements. Unprecedented extremes recorded in every corner of the earth. Even climate is changed in spots. A freak year, change in climate. Assigned reasons vary from spots on the sun to concurrences of meteorological cycles. On June 22, 1934, the chief meteorologist of the U.S. Weather Bureau said that a worldwide drought was likely. Weatherman admits there is something wrong and that no one knows why. One thing we know for sure is that the record heat, drought, and berserk weather of 1934 was not caused by carbon dioxide. And that's why NOAA and NASA feel the need to erase it. Here's an article from the Mercury in Australia from June 4, 1934. World drought, farmers' ruinous losses, almost universal disaster. Europe revives pagan rites. England was having their worst drought in 100 years. Manchester Guardian, Saturday, May 12, 1934. New York darkened by vast dust cloud. Freak weather in the United States. Heat wave and drought hit the farmers. High temperatures in Britain. This is in early May. Melbourne, Australia was having their hottest weather in 25 years, and bushfires were all over South Australia. The 1934 drought was unparalleled. The press in 1934 was reporting on melting Arctic ice and said that New York was going to drown, just like they do now. Here's an interesting page from August 20th, 1934. 1934, driest and hottest year yet. Washington, August 20th. The year 1934, the driest and hottest year on record thus far. The Weather Bureau says so and has been keeping tab on precipitation and temperature for 70 years. The drought has been aggravated by sizzling heat. Nothing remotely approaching the severity for this combination appears in the annals of the Weather Bureau. J.B. Kintzer, Weather Bureau meteorologist, said today. Other drought years, notably in 1894 to 1895, 1910, 1914, and 1930, were exceedingly dry in many sections, he said but no previous 12 months has shown generally deficient rainfall during April, May, June, and July. Something very severe was going on with the weather around the world during the year 1934, and obviously NOAA and NASA don't want you to know about it, so they're rewriting America's history. And on the right is another article from the same page of the same newspaper that day. Hitler changed section of will. Paris, August 20th. The newspaper Paris Soir charged today that the will of the late President Paul von Hindenburg of Germany had been falsified so as to eliminate a recommendation that former Kaiser Wilhelm should succeed him. The newspaper said the last section of the will was written by Paul Goebbels, Nazi Minister of Propaganda. Rewriting history is always a big part of seizing power and control. Nothing has changed. If Americans were aware of the heat, drought, and extreme weather of our past, no one would buy off on the climate crisis scam.
erasing the heat of 1934 as essential for the propagandists. In order to stop this takeover of the U.S. energy supply, we need to get the CO2 endangerment finding of the EPA reversed. The EPA endangerment finding is the legal document which they can and will use to shut down the fossil fuel supply of the United States, which we all depend on day to day. If you care about the future of America, do everything you can to get the CO2 endangerment finding revisited and reversed. The people behind this showed us this week that they're willing to terrorize children and use them for propaganda. They do not have good intentions. What they've done to Greta Thunberg and how they've frightened, terrorized, used, and abused her is absolutely despicable. A few years ago, climate alarmists terrorized this family in Argentina so much that they committed suicide and shot their baby over global warming fears. The baby survived, but she's an orphan now, and her brother died too in the global warming terror attack. People like this little girl and Greta Thunberg are paying a very real price for global warming fraud. She's dropped out of school, and she's terrified. Visit Toto on the web at realclimatescience.com. He's been pulling back the curtain on junk science and propaganda for a long time.